Robert Klee. Is he here? I don't see him here. He had the other one. Okay. Uh, how about uh, Pam Ian? Pam, welcome. Uh, Ms. Ian, welcome to House Education. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Pam Ian. I live in Concord, and I am a living and breathing public school teacher, mother, and grandmother. My children and my grandchildren went through or, or are in right now public school. And I have to tell you that I am totally against this bill. I'm a teacher, as I said. I have to protect my students. I have to protect myself. If someone armed comes into the building, the only person in, in our school, if this bill passes, would be the resource officer. Okay, he's nowhere near my classroom. I'm a former police officer. I've been trained in weapons. Um, I do practice. I know quite a few teachers in my school that do practice. They um, either belong to a gun club or they practice on their own property. I just think it's ridiculous for the state to say that the school districts would have to impose this on the teachers. After all, I'm supposed to protect my students. If we have someone in the building that has a, a weapon, I can't catch the bullets and protect them. But I could shoot back. And I, this, and I hope you guys don't take this the, the wrong way, but there is a constitutional right for me as an American to protect my own right. I work for a government school, and you guys are all government employees. You really don't have the right to go against the Constitution and tell me that I can't have my rights. And uh, you know, that's what this bill would do. It's true if I worked for a private school or if I went into an industry that is not, that they have a, a no-gun uh, rule. Yeah, I'd have to obey it if I want to do business with them. But public schools are government. And the best way for me to protect my students would be to be able to protect them the best that I can. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zia. Is there any questions of the presenter? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. The next person I have is, I believe it is Sonia Price. Thank you. And uh, on deck would be uh, uh, Mr. Simkin. Thank you for being here in the front of the House Education. Thank you for having me. It's very interesting to listen to all the committees and how respectful the committee is. Um, a lot of people have said the same things that I'm going to say, so I'm going to try to skip it and make it a lot easier for you. Um, I grew up with hunters. Nobody particularly afraid of me, you know, needing their guns for protection or anything like that. So I really haven't lived that experience. Um, we used to lock the guns, have two sets of keys, particularly in case somebody had mental instability, were exposed to the guns, or small children around. Um, when you think about a mass shooter, you don't really often respond with just one cop with a gun or one individual with a gun. Usually you see like a slew of police coming towards that person and a SWAT team, right? Because sometimes they're really powerful guns coming at them. So it's a little silly for me to even try to imagine that somebody unexpectedly, not everybody's gun ready 24 hours a day, right? We do everything during the day, we're distracted. Um, it's kind of silly for me to expect that somebody with a gun could possibly be the hero. It could happen. I'm sure it does happen on occasion, but um, a handgun versus a powerful gun that maybe shoots you know, multiple bullets per second, um, it's hard for me to imagine. So far, I haven't heard too many situations like that. Um, I don't trust everyone's judgment. I'd love to. I wish everybody had a resume on their forehead so that when they're near my kids, I could say, oh yeah, you're a good guy. I don't mind having you around my children. But I don't, and when I pick a sitter for children, I'm very careful about their character and their, you know, what their background is and things like that. So if somebody's going to have a gun around my children, I'm going to have the same criteria. Are they safe around my children? I teach my children, you know, who do you hang out with? You know, good company. You know, pick wisely who your friends are. If I don't want them hanging out with bullies. You know, try to educate the bullies. <laughs> my um, motto, but you know, we're teaching our children these values. 
Um, again, I, I'd love to say that everybody who owns a gun um, has proper training, and that would be great. If everybody had proper training, and they were trained how to react in a criminal situation, and that if there is a police that comes on, on the site and they can identify that person, great, but that's just not reality. Anybody who turns 18 can go buy a gun, and I have no idea if that person has had any safety classes, or do they have good judgment, I have no idea. So again, it's like the stranger danger thing, it's, it's really not interesting to me to have those people around my children. Um, let's see, I'm trying to skip over a lot of stuff here. So yeah, there's about five states left, I think, if, is that correct, five states left, approximately. Um, you know, I don't want to be the next one. I'm a big believer in statistics. So far, we haven't had a mass shooting. So I'd like to keep it that way. I don't think this bill is perfect and the only bill that's going to help, but I think multiple little bills combined could keep us a little safer. They've done it in other states, and it has improved um, in their area. Every state is different, and every population is different. I get that. Um, I have three teens. And they're not happy about the drills at school either. I know everybody's been mentioning it, so I'm just not going to repeat all that, but they're not happy about that either. And I'll leave you with the statement that I read this morning. Um, let's take a moment to honor the sacrifice of our school children who lay down their lives to protect their rights to bear arms. Think of our veterans in the same way. I think it's terrible that kids continue to die in our schools. And we're not doing anything about it. People in other states are coming here to buy guns because it's easy and they're going back to their states. We need to do something. It's upsetting to me. Thank you for your testimony. Are, are there any questions that were presented? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I have uh, uh, Mr. Simpkin followed by Xander Rice Hawkins. Mr. Simpkin's down the hall. Can I take his spot? Uh, no, you may not. I'm going to play. You can't blame me for asking, right, Mr. Chair? Nice drive. Nice drive. <laughs> but I will go to another uh, con, and I will call uh, James Gaffin. <coughs> Aside from that, I hear a lot of emotional argument today. I hear people are scared. Why are they scared? A lot of people have pre prevented, presented a, a bunch of data. What are we trying to prevent? What's the bill trying to accomplish? If you look at the data, every, everywhere where we declare gun-free zones, we get less safe. We have more shootings. Look at California. California is a poster child for every imaginable gun control scheme ever designed or conceived. And their murder rates keep going up. Same with Chicago. Just pick a city. More gun control equals more crime. Let's take the bill. The, the bill that, that's being proposed proposes changes to, what is it? Chapter 193D of the Safe School Zones Act. And in that act, pretty much everything you can imagine is already illegal. You can't assault anyone, you can't trespass, you can't pick it. It's already illegal. Now you want to make it something that's already illegal, illegal another way. To accomplish what? Go back to my previous argument. If laws solved problems, we wouldn't need more laws. Nobody's proposing any solutions to problems. <clears throat> we want to keep our kids safe, right? How many kids die on the highway every year, learning how to drive because they're inexperienced? I mean, Johns Hopkins just released a study not too long ago that talked about over 250,000 people dying every year of medical malpractice. I don't see anybody talking about that. 
That's a huge problem. How many people die on our highways, whether they're, they're adolescents or adults everywhere? I don't see anybody in the room talking about that. I don't see anybody t proposing a bill that, that would even purport to address some of those issues. Real issues. We're, we're not talking about the 21, 22, 23 people that are killed in the state of New Hampshire via any means, whether they're firearms, knives, anything imaginable every year. I mean, New Hampshire is every year shown to be one of the top three safest states in the country. And yet, now we're focusing again on trying to violate the rights of people doing, trying to do nothing but defend themselves. Schools are multi-use multi places. They're places that we pay for as a taxpayer. Kids use them for education, they're used for other events, they're used for voting, they're used for meetings, and yet we're going to tell people that if they want to use the, this taxpayer-funded resources, source, whether it's during school or not, they have to make themselves less safe. Government's already decided that government doesn't have an obligation to defend you. So who's going to defend you? Who's going to keep you safe? Besides you. This bill might make people feel better, but it doesn't solve the problem. I'd urge the board to, to vote this ITL. Thank you. Any uh, questions of the presenter? No, Perry, thank you very much. I'd now like to call um, Xander Rice Hawkins to the 